Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar al Rawi. I'm a uh, PhD student at Georgia Tech. Uh, today I'll be presenting our SOK work on uh, the security evaluation of home-based IoT deployments. So I want you to imagine the situation where there's a burglar who's trying to break into a house. So they would have to do a forced entry by either uh, breaking a door or window, setting off an alarm, and then they're rushed to take as much things as possible and leave. And what's interesting is if you are exposed to tech media, you'll hear stories where it says, hey, actually a thief doesn't have to do that. They can just walk up to your door and yell, Alexa, unlock the front door. And the front door would unlock, the alarm is disarmed, and the thief can clean up the place pretty quickly. So that's a funny story, but when we think about Internet of Things, it's easy to buy into these stories because we see these headlines all the time. The Internet of Things are doomed in terms of security. It's a big dumpster fire. Nobody can tame it. And you have that the security of these devices is just a nightmare to manage. And that's easy to see uh, just because you have complex devices that are connected to the Internet. You have devices that have voice command um, to to, to be able to talk to, to interact with. And then you have another Alexa type of device that has a screen with a camera and talks to Facebook. And then you have an oven that watches your food and streams videos of it across the internet. And then a fridge with a gigantic tablet, because why not? So personally, I don't know what type of risk or what type of exposure I'm doing if I buy a connected uh, fridge here. And so you can think about you know, our parents or grandparents who, you know, have no idea how to, um, you know, they come ask you a question, where's the start menu on Alexa? I don't know if Alexa runs Windows XP, right? It's, that's an easy question to answer, but when they ask, hey, um, is there, is this safe to have in my house? Am I going to be hacked? I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, and, 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 and it's very hard to quantify just because there are so many components to this device. Uh, it's important to note that there has been prior work to quantify these uh, security issues and devices, things that I've looked at at platforms, uh, platforms of the, the, the IoT devices, uh, attacking the voice interface, uh, securing some of the platforms, uh, skill squatting um, for apps that are run on these voice-enabled devices. So there's a lot of, a lot of, these, uh, a lot of this work that has already been done, and, and it actually highlights the security landscape of this uh, devices. And these are very important, but how would I use this information? How can I use this information and tell my parents, this device is a good device. This device, I wouldn't put it in my home, but that's, a, that's your choice. And it's, it's not a straightforward process. You can't just tell them, go read this paper, um, it, it, because there's, there's that knowledge gap that they have to know about. So wouldn't it be nice to be, to be able to say, hey, I bring this device home. I want to know what cloud endpoints it talks to. I want to know what, what services it exposes on the network. Um, what about the mobile app? I'm setting up this device on, in my home, and um, I have to download an app and install it on my um, phone, which has a lot of personal information. And what about the network? Does it degra degrade my uh, quality of service on my home network? Um, answering these questions would be really nice and be able to quantify the, uh, the landscape or the ecosystem of these uh, devices. Something like consumer reports, right? So consumer reports gives you reliability, uh, gives you how easy to use the device. But imagine something like this, but for the security aspect of the device. So we set out to look at the prior work and see how can, we look, how can we leverage prior work to be able to answer these questions. Um, so what we found is a lot of the work focuses on studying the device itself, the network that is associated with these devices, and the cloud integration services, so like IFTTT. The mitigations proposed uh, were mostly patching, and patching uh, carries the responsibility for the vendor because they control that software that runs on the device. 
Um, we also found some areas that would be interesting to explore, like the mobile app. The mobile app has inherent trust with your uh, device. Um, cl the cloud services, the backends, you have Amazon, you have uh, Azure, you have uh, Google who are offering these IoT backends uh, that would be interesting to see what type of security issues are there. And then secure network discovery protocols. Uh, a lot of these devices run UPnP, and we've known UPnP to be insecure for 15 years, but they're still, and even devices that you go buy off the shelf today. And then finally, user control and visibility, to be able to actually um, get a sense of what the device is doing on your network. So this is what the prior work has done, has done. And we said, okay, we wanna step back a little bit and kind of get a, a holistic view of, of these uh, uh, IoT devices. So what we realize is that when you bring this device home and you set it up, you are downloading a mobile app to set the device up. And once it's set up, it's actually talking to a cloud endpoint or several cloud endpoints. And then within that, there, are, there is the network communication that exists between all these components. And this framework that we propose is useful because we can actually use something like this to apply it to all types of devices. So it doesn't matter if it's a vacuum cleaner, right? Or if it's a media device. I can, I can apply this to any, any connected device over the internet. Um, so we use, we use this to, we said, okay, let's use this framework to uh, evaluate the uh, off-the-shelf devices and see what kind of things we can find. So we wanted to do it in a systematic way. So the first thing we need to be objective, transparent, measurable, reproducible. These, these are properties that we want when we do our evaluation. The second thing we wanted is that we want device representation. These devices are extremely diverse. You have things that are, um, that, that run a media and you have a fridge and then you have a connected oven. So the, all, all these devices are very diverse and we wanted a representative uh, device set to actually evaluate. And finally, uh, since these are consumer facing devices, we want the results to be easy to understand. So having that in mind, this is a picture of our lab. We went out and bought a bunch of devices and we start plugging them in. We thought it was gonna be an easy task, but it turned out to be non-trivial actually. Um, just the other day, I uh, plugged in a device and I heard an explosion in the ceiling. So I started thinking to myself, uh, I need to change my name, move to a different state, but we figured it out, uh, it wasn't a big deal. So we take these devices and we evaluate every single one of them. So how does the evaluation happen? Let's take an example. For the IoT, uh, evalu uh, IoT device, what we look for are four things. We look at how does it pair to the internet? How, does it, how is it configured? Does it operate without configuration? Is it updatable? Can we update it? Does it do automatic updates or is it manual updates? And then what exposed services are on the network are, and are any of them vulnerable? So what we found here for this uh, device, the Mikasa Vera Lite, uh, there were two uh, remote code execution uh, that affected the uh, UPnP service and the SSH service on the device. For the cloud, we look at what type of backends and how many of backends does it talk to? The TLS SSL properties on the cloud backend. So are, is, is it self-signed? Are there name mismatches on the certificate? Are, is, is it an old version of the SSL TLS protocol being supported? And then any insecure protocols that run on the device. And finally, we look at, again, vulnerable software with any exposed services. And for this case, the uh, Belkin Netcam, we actually found that it talks to 12 different first party uh, backends. So this is a single device talking 12 different backends. Uh, it supports um, older versions of SSL and it had a remote code execution on the uh, logic backend. Um, for the mobile app, we looked at three properties. We looked at permissions, we looked at programming errors, and then we looked at hard-coded secrets. And, what, and for this case, the Kugik uh, light bulb, we found uh, hard-coded crypto keys and then, of course, um, the analytics for Yuming um, API key hard-coded into the mobile app. And then for the, uh, for the network, uh, we looked at the protocols in use. What protocols can, are we seeing across the wire? Um, are these, is this communication encrypted? And then if it's encrypted, 
can we man in the middle these uh, uh, communications? Because they can do, uh, they can, they, the, the encryption can be encrypted, but are they doing proper certificate pinning? So the, the man in the middle attacks won't work. So these are properties we looked for um, for each of the devices. And for the Sonos Play one, what we found is that most of the uh, traffic is encrypted across the internet, but a lot of the traffic within the lo local LAN is unencrypted. So what we did is we took these evaluations, remember the four components, we have the device, the network uh, component, the cloud component, and the um, mobile component, and we created a scorecard system that represents the rates of these uh, uh, components um, to kind of get an understanding of what, what, are, what, what grades that each of them get. And we've documented this on our website. So if you need more information on how we do the scoring, you can please uh, visit our website. So let's take an example of the grading system. So we, we have this component framework, the, the, the component based, the four parts. We drop in the uh, device, we evaluate it, and then we get, a, um, we get a score for that device. Then we take the mobile app, we drop it in, we calculate the uh, great, and we get a, a great for that device. Similarly, we do that for the network, and then we do that also for the cloud uh, component. So what's interesting here is the uh, variation in score. For each of the components, you can see a high score at the network grade of almost 90%, and a low score for the cloud grade at almost 58%. And what's interesting, too, is that this is a single device. This is a Harman Kardon Invoke. This is a single device, and this framework highlights this component-based analysis that shows the different security issues that could exist within this ecosystem. Let's take multiple devices. I want you to look at this table. You can see at the cloud grade, you have a large variation from 94%, 93%, all the way down to 40%. And then less variation on the device and less variations on the mobile grade. But what's interesting about this case is that this is the same manufacturer. This is a Belkin uh, device. These are three Belkin devices. Um, and you would think that the Belkin has a process of building these devices so you would see less variation. But we, these are some things that we're surprised to find applying the methodology and these, uh, this framework. Not everything was good. We actually were surprised to find some really good devices, like this Canary camera. It scored really well on almost all categories. So applying this, we found a couple of takeaways of things that good devices do. So devices that are usually score high, they're cloud managed, um, they have auto updates, and they encrypt the local traffic with authenticated services. So these, these are just properties that trended out of applying this methodology. And what, what, what's interesting too is that when, when we looked at this component-based analysis is that it, it highlighted a lot of different things that we, we, uh, we weren't expecting. And I encourage everyone to also visit our website because we have 45 devices. We've also added 70, uh, we, our lab has now 70 devices that we'll be uh, updating the website soon with. So, I want to take a step back here and just mention that what you just saw is a single evaluation or a single snapshot uh, evaluation of these devices. What we want to do is look at a longitudinal analysis and be able to see how this analysis changes over time. These devices get updates. And as updates come along, things could get worse, could get better. CVEs are pu uh, publicized. How does that impact these components? The second thing here is we want a more realistic representation. The, the lab has devices that uh, have sensors, which in, when deployed in, in the lab, it's different than it's deployed at home. You have people walking, you have foot traffic, you have people talking to these devices, whereas in the lab, we need to induce that activity. So that's another thing that we, we are working on to improve so we can get a better representational score of those devices. With that, I've, uh, we've actually opened uh, our data set on our website, so you can uh, go ahead and download there. Uh, we, we know of several researchers who actually have downloaded the data already. They've published paper on this uh, work. Some of them have gotten Best Paper Award, so we're proud of that. Um, yeah, and, and um, you can visit our website. It's yourthings.info, 
Um, and then if you have any additional questions, you can contact us, contact at yourthings.info. Thank you. Okay, so we have time for a few questions. Please state your name and affiliation. Hi, uh, Tatsuya Mori from Waseda University. Did you look at the correlation between cost and security score? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand. Uh, did you look at uh, correlation between the cost and the security level of each device? The, the cost of the device and the security? Uh, we did not. No. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Meng Fei from UT uh, Arlington. So uh, I read your paper, and uh, in your evaluation, you m mainly focus on the IP-based uh, protocols. So did you do any evaluation on lower energy protocol like ZigBee or ZWave, or uh, is there any change you have? Uh, we, we have. We have looked at lower, low energy protocols. Uh, the, the challenge there is automating these uh, to be able to do the evaluation um, uh, in, a, in a systematic way. So we. We are, we are looking to explore that area further, but um, we don't have anything that's uh, public facing ready yet. Okay, so I also have a few questions. Um, yeah. First, how long does it take to do such an evaluation? Because uh, if you analyze 45 devices. Yeah, so we, we, we do evaluations on a weekly basis. Um, so for the devices, uh, for the mobile apps, it's, um, it's automated. Uh, the network, some of the network portion requires some manual, like the man in the middle uh, that we're working on to automate. Uh, but I would say uh, per device, uh, um, that for this work, when we did the uh, evaluation, I think per device it would take about an hour and a half or so. So uh, 45 devices took, took us some, about a week uh, of the work. And how about privacy? Privacy is another thing we look at. So uh, if you go to the website, the DNS, uh, for example, the DNS, uh, we, we consider privacy there. And you'll see some devices actually will not let you change the recursive. They, they, like, for example, the Google devices, they use the 8888 uh, recursive, and, and you cannot change it. They don't respect, even if you change it and you tell it to use your gateways uh, DNS, they will not, they will actually, um, yeah, reach directly out. So that's, that's one of the things we penalize for in terms of uh, privacy um, in our evaluation. Okay, so thank you, and let's thank Omar again. Yeah. Thank you.